Well, we're still at the Narrow Gauge Convention in Sacramento. Yes. And staying in Old Town Sacramento oh. on our riverboat, which is just so darn fun. There's a lot of shops there, too. There's a lot of shops. This week, we're going over to the uh, California Railroad Museum, the California yes. State Railroad Museum, because they have some engines over there which are really neat, mm -hmm. Virginia and Truckee. And we're going to do a whole exploration of Virginia and Truckee. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the group over there, the Locomotive and Railway, the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society, that have been collecting these things since about 1915 or something, wow. have this really great collection of Virginia and Truckee engines, as does the uh, Nevada State Railroad Museum in Nevada. And uh, we're going to go ride the railroad, but mostly we want to show you the really neat Virginia and Truckee engines yes. at the California State Railroad Museum in Old Town, yes. Sacramento, where we're living on a riverboat. Yes. Yes. Well, we're back at the uh, California State Railroad Museum. We're still at the Narrow Gauge Convention, of course, but for this week, we're gonna go back to the museum because we wanna show you guys some, some other neat stuff. We've already shown you the Central Pacific locomotives they have over here, and oh my heck. Uh, Central Pacific to me is so special, and, and we saw the, the future expansion of the museum, and that's really cool. They just have a lot of really cool things here. But ever since I was just a kid, one of my favorite railroads was the Virginia and Truckee. Oh. Oh my heck, a classic Old West railroad that ran right near here, ran between Virginia City and Carson City and the Truckee River. Wow. In Reno. Neat. And they've got three surviving locomotives here in their collection. This is the Bulker, and uh, they've got it on the display tracks, fortunately. It used to just live in a shed outside, and I was always trying to take pictures through, through the bars in the darkness. And anyway, here it is, finally, on display. What a beautiful little engine. Wonderful. And it has the most fascinating history. Um, it's a little teeny engine, but it's got big, huge drive wheels because it was intended to be a passenger locomotive. Serious. But it's more like a commuter rail thing because it can only haul like one or two cars because it's such a teeny little thing. So they also used it in switching, but its general purpose was to haul just a few passenger cars probably between uh, like Carson and Reno, because I don't think it would have gone up the hill. Uh, but the pictures that you see, it's generally pulling a couple of passenger cars. But what a neat little engine, which also accounts for why it survived, because it got uh, adopted by the movie and TV industry and used in all kinds of projects like that because it's so stinking cute it is and here it is painted as the jupiter oh dear <laughs> oh my goodness but like i say it got used in movies so it got a lot of different weird paint jobs on it but that has made it one of the best known virginian truckee engines because it survives <laughs> and it's offered in ho oh neat by river rossi and they, they modeled this back in the 60s, and it's been on and off the market ever since, still available. But the museum's done a really nice cosmetic restoration on it, and uh, I kind of like it in the, the chocolate brown. At first, I wanted to see brighter colors, you know. Right. But no, it's perfect, just like this. Uh, classic Baldwin, of course. Most of the engines built back then were Baldwin. Uh, and uh, just the bell mounted to the top of the sand dome, just a fun feature there. But the screwiest feature is this water pump. Um, I don't get that. I've never seen that on a locomotive, but this is a water pump off of a fire engine, a steam fire engine. Oh, wow. Because they envisioned this uh, being their fire truck. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and it can pump water from the tender to a fire hose, and when there's a fire, they can dispatch the bulker to put out the fire. So what a weird and wonderful history this thing has. 
And uh, the, the rule of thumb here is kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. There you go. <laughs> it's just such a fun little engine, and there's, there's just very little going on here in the cockpit. Just a real basic, simple little steam engine. I love it. Simple is good. That's right. This bell uh, indicates that it was a, a passenger train. Uh, a cord would be hooked to this and it would all snap together throughout the entire train. And if a passenger spotted some emergency, they could tug on the emergency cord and that would ring this bell and tell the crew to bring the train to a stop because something had gone horribly wrong somewhere in the back. Lucille Ball's on board. <laughs> <laughs> and look at the coupler. Uh, you can pull that pin out and drop the knuckle out and then you can do Lincoln pin because the Virginian Truckee started off as Lincoln pin and then they rapidly switched to knuckle coupler. So this has the ability to do either or. You can just pull the knuckle out of the socket and use the pin directly on the link. If you're not careful, that's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> But it is just, uh, I don't know, it could possibly be my favorite. I have so many, I have a hard time doing favorites. But this is so classically 1870. It's just beautiful. And here we have number 12, the Genoa or Genoa. It depends who you're talking uh, to. <laughs> um, the most famous Virginian Truckee engine of all my time. My favorite. It's so beautiful. I mean, it's just a classic Baldwin oh. 440, but uh, it survived, which is important. And here it is just looking so gorgeous in the museum. And uh, it just, uh, it's been used in so many movies and TV and whatnot uh, that it's just gained the reputation as the most famous of all Virginia and Truckee engines. Back in the day, there was nothing special about it. It was just one of many Baldwin 440s running around on the railroad. But there's just something so classic about it that, well, it explains why it got used in so many movies and on TV and that sort of thing. It also got to stand in for the Jupiter oh. in 1969 for the centennial of the driving of the Golden Spike because back then they didn't have the reproduction engines. And here again, River Rossi uh, has offered it, and th this time both in HO scale and in O scale. Where's my O scale? Come on. Let's see the O scale. There it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're late. Anyway, here's the O-scale version of that. Uh, one of the funnest kits you'll ever build also was available ready to run. But it's, uh, and it's uh, interesting because it's the European O-scale modeled ever so slightly oversized so that the gauge comes out correct. And there's the real thing. Yes, my favorite. I just, we could have stood here all day and just oh, yeah. stared at this thing. It's just so beautifully uh, preserved uh, here in the museum, not operational, but on a lot of levels, who cares? Because it's just perfect like it is. And uh, they've displayed it here on an iron link bridge, which was a pretty popular truss construction uh, back in the day. And they've uh, managed to preserve one of those off the railroad as well. And they've got the locomotive displayed on the bridge. The construction uses this four-part tube construction. They, they didn't know how to make tubes back then, so this is how they constructed tubes. This is how the Devil's Gate Viaduct in uh, Georgetown, Colorado was built using this exact same uh, riveted tube construction technique. Is I think that... it'd be stronger. Yeah, I, I don't mean, know. It looks yeah. like it would be stronger. And they've got a Virginian Truckee passenger car. Nice. Perfectly restored. Doesn't that remind you of Dan's of passenger Dan's. car? So beautiful. This though. guy Dan has built his own 1870 passenger car. He's, he's still worried. He told us it'll be ready on Tuesday. Uh, just won't specify which one. Uh, anyway, the interior of these 1870 cars were all pinstriped and hardwood. And oh my heck, man, to have a time machine. But in a way we do because, well, there it is. Exactly. Right here in the museum. And here we have their third Virginia and Truckee engine, the Empire number 13. 
And uh, the display that they've done for this one is so spectacular. It's wrapped in mirrors so that you can really see it. And what I got a big kick out of is it also bounces the light all around. Because some of these are kind of hard to see because of the shadows and whatnot. But since this is standing on mirrors, the light bounces up and you can see every little detail. You can see absolutely everything about this beautiful mogul. This kind of uh, brown, it's almost got a hint of maroon to it. A very standard classic color from the Baldwin Locomotive Works. And then the gold, white, and red pinstriping. Just all of the Baldwin engines, well not all of them, but most of them received this red, gold, and white pinstriping. And it's just gorgeous. And because of the mirrors... There you are. <laughs> there I am, and you can see the top of the engine. I just love what they've done here with the mirrors. And it's just such a beautiful engine to display properly this way. I was just, just blown away. How wonderful is this? These hooks originally had a long length of chain hanging from them. And they could hook that to the coupler when a car derails and you need to pull it back up on the tracks. Well, you can't very well couple to it. So you use a tow chain. Well, there you go. And that's where they would hang the tow chain, was on those hooks. Now, the Genoa here was restored, as, as I understand it, by the uh, Nevada State Railroad Museum. And, as I understand it, they own it. And it's on loan over here. But I'm not, I'm not sure about that. But they have a collection of Virginian trucky engines of their own. They do. <laughs> Over at Carson City in the Nevada State Railroad Museum, they have three surviving engines. Number 25 here is a more modern engine. And it's such a good runner, it's currently on loan to the actual Virginia and Truckee Railroad. And they can run it between Carson City and Virginia City up in the mountains. We have yet to ride behind this engine, but it's on our must-do list. Absolutely. <laughs> but we did get a chance to go ride the Virginia and Truckee up at Virginia City. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome aboard the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. My name is Don. I'll be your conductor this afternoon. We do have a few very simple safety rules. We're going to ask everyone to follow... First, please do not move back and forth between the cars while the train is in motion. Please keep anything... Now, because we were riding after Labor Day, we had to ride behind a diesel engine because they don't yeah. run steam except on the weekends. So the, uh, the, so the social season was over and everybody was uh, leaving the Hamptons and returning to Manhattan. Exactly. <laughs> please turn off your cell phones. They do interfere with the navigational equipment on board the engine. Now they've got some really neat equipment up here in Virginia City, part of the railroad. They've relayed the track all the way from Virginia City here down to the outskirts of Carson City. So uh, a major piece of the Virginian Truckee has been rebuilt. The train station here survived because somebody was living in it. <laughs> yes. And they managed to get it away from them, and, and it's back to being the train station again instead of somebody's house. But what a beautiful little station. Oh, I love it. And they had some neat stuff. Yes. So we bought some neat stuff here. Now, the railroad grade from here actually continued on. It ends right here now, but originally it entered a tunnel portal right here and ran under the church oh boy. <laughs> and over to a mine. How cool is that? Oh boy, it sounds like they need new brakes. Yeah, I <laughs> think the rivets have come oh, through or metal something. Metal on metal. Ooh, that's that's bad. It's a really neat little General Electric uh, center cab. Uh, anyway, you ready to take a ride? Absolutely. Let's go. The tunnel is about 465 feet long, built by Hard Rock Miners and Nick Shovels in Wedges. 
most of the MT was built uh, using hand tools, very few explosives. One of the reasons the primary explosives of the recovery era was nitroglycerin. It was very expensive and very unstable. Black powder was available, but it was unreliable. Dynamite, 10 years away from being invented. It's really neat that they were able to reopen this tunnel. And it was really uh, just a few years ago that they were able to lay the track from Gold Hill all the way down to Carson City. Now the only run two trains a day down to Carson City, most of the trains do what our train is doing here, and that's run down to Gold Hill and back. Oh look, I filmed a caved in tunnel. Yeah, they weren't able to reopen this one, so they just went out and around it. <laughs> now, another Virginia and Truckee engine has managed to completely escape the area. Number 20 here has found its way to the museum in Pennsylvania. Oh my goodness. So that's really neat. I'd really love to get out there and see that sometime. First of all, we just want to see that museum. Exactly. But they have uh, number 20 out there, and I really want to see that. And another surviving Virginian Truckee engine is uh, probably the other most famous engine, the Reno. Yes. And it's on display in Tucson. In Tucson? Yep, it's on display at a movie studio. Here again, River Rossi has done a really nice model of that. This is the HO scale version of that, and that's still on the market. Back in the 60s, they offered an O scale kit of that. And it's not that hard to find if you want to build one of these. It's a really fun. We've done a Tuesday show on that, so you can check that out. It also uh, substituted for the 119 on the Centennial at Promontory. Uh, again, the original locomotives were gone and the reproductions hadn't been built yet. Now here's the Reno at the Roundhouse in Carson City. Uh, what a neat roundhouse that was. It wasn't round though, it was it was square. A square roundhouse. Yeah, they, uh, for some reason they didn't build it round even though they had a turn to... Anyway, here's the Reno at the shops. And here's what the shops look like today. Oh, uh, where are they? <laughs> yeah, they tore them down. Oh gee. And that's just really, really sad. Uh, what they have to show for it is this lovely swatch of dirt. Oh my. I just I just hate to see people tear down old buildings and, and then not even do a darn thing with the land. This is what the shops look like in oh, 1869 when nice. they were built. Is that cool? That's beautiful. Just a beautiful structure. And then uh, it was such a busy little railroad that... Uh, can you imagine the activity around this shop back in the 1870s and how cool that would have been to see? Just an amazing shop, all the machine tools and everything going on inside. Oh, to have a time machine. I wish we could just step into this picture. Now at the back of this picture in the trees, uh, there is a structure back there. You can just barely see it. Uh, let's give it the finger here. Flip the finger. Come on, finger. There it is. Back here is the, uh, the depot. Uh, oh. The station, the Carson City Depot, and there's what it looks like it's today. It's still there. Yeah, the the uh, the local Masons took it over, the the Freemasons, and they use it as a lodge hall, so it survives, fortunately. And if you look closely, you can still see Mark Twain hanging out on the platform. Oh wow! Anyway, uh, back to the shops here. Here we have the Reno again, just pulling out of the shops. The Reno was converted to run on oil. Uh, so it continued being in operation even after the railroad had modernized and switched over to oil. As far as I know, it was the only uh, 440 that was modernized to run on oil. In 1950, when they abandoned the railroad, they did not tear down the shops and they survived. And people kept saying, well, we should use it for this and we should use it for that. But nobody was forthcoming with any money and then in the 1980s, there was a fire. Oh. And it destroyed a small part, a small part of the roof. The building was still in pretty much good shape, but it had done a little bit of damage to the, to the, the stone walls and destroyed a, a part of the roof. 
but that gave the people who wanted to tear it down an excuse. They really don't need much of an excuse. It seems like they're anxious to tear things like this down. I never get that. It's like, what's wrong with just keeping it like it is? This is what it looked like the first time I saw it, and the only time that I saw it, because in 1991, they tore it down. Oh dear. 91. 91, not that long ago. Not that long ago. And all these great ideas on what to do with it all fell down along with the roundhouse. And uh, that was an end of that. I was just heartbroken. I really wanted to see somebody do something with this. It went from this beautiful, beautiful structure to nothing but a swatch of dirt. Hmm. Now, right next door to it was the Territorial Prison. Oh! It's now the Federal Building. Oh! But they've put up this little monument over there. They've used some of the original stone and put up a little monument saying this was the Territorial Prison. And then uh, over next door was the roundhouse and shops of the Virginian Truckee. They saved uh, a lot of the stone, particularly the stone arches, with an idea that they might like to do something with that. But unfortunately, so far, all it's been used for are gates on people's houses. Well, there you go. There you go. I, whatever, somebody got something out of the deal. We wanted to find the location of the turntable, and that wasn't at all hard to figure out. It was right here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they're, they're turning that car on it as we speak. Um, so, uh, just gone. So that's the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. Oh, isn't that neat? As a kid, I thought that was the neatest short line that had ever existed, and I'm still kind of of that opinion, although now I think the Nevada Northern is also really cool. And they're all really cool. They're I all have really several cool. favorites. But the Virginia and Truckee is still, it was the queen of the narrow, uh, not of the narrow gauges, of the short lines, it was a full size, of course. Mm. But, uh, oh, my gosh, it, and it was built uh, 1869, so it's right there in my favorite era of locomotives, the yes. striping and the brass, and right. just so neat. And it was around right up to the moment when I was born. They scrapped it out in 1950, oh, really? and oh, my. a year later I came along. Wow. So I just missed it that much. <laughs> of course, if I'd have seen it when I was two, I probably wouldn't have. Hey, what is that? Wouldn't know. Anyway, <laughs> I digress. But that is just such a beautiful railroad, and it's neat that they've rebuilt part of it. But the neatest thing of all is that so many of those engines have survived. Yeah. And that is just so, yeah, it's wonderful. so cool. Yeah. Well, if you haven't been over to the channel, pop on over to the channel. And if you're not a subscriber, do subscribe. Yes. Because it helps you out, because then you can click your notification bell and be notified when we upload foolishness. Right. And it helps us out because we can demonstrate to the world that we have subscribers. Yes. <laughs> just just kind of helps with that. And the easy way to become a subscriber on the channel is to click on the blue button, which is about to appear. Are we yes. ready for it? Sorry. That, that, that blue button. That's the blue button with the little bar. <laughs> Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here next week because we're still going to be in Sacramento. We going around. Are. See you there. <laughs> see you. Bye-bye.